just very eager that's fine i am super eager to start talking about entrepreneurs out i'm guessing um i'm nestine and this is that would make me peter we're the co-founders of explore protec entrepreneurial haven and um, we basically have a home for entrepreneurs across the globe the people that you see on the screen right now are all members of our tribe they are all entrepreneurs and they're all here to answer your questions so the way that the coffee shop conversation show works is um, we've had time to collect questions from you guys, you entrepreneurs out there throughout the week. Um, you've sent us out your questions and we've prioritized them, we've collated them, and we're going to be asking them and posing them to the members of our tribe. They are then going to give us real expert answers. 
That way you get the best information right out of real entrepreneurs' mouths. And just to highlight the fact that we recently watched an interview with um, Megan and Stephen Levy, and I'm pretty sure we'll drop that link in the description below because you've got to watch that too because the topic is just so relatable. So you can enjoy that as well. Also, um, on that topic, we have um, our new jewelry on. Can everyone see it? So we have the Phoenixes. They're finally ready. We got them this um, this week. Some of all, one of our tribe members is making them. They are the symbol for entrepreneurs rising out of the ashes of COVID-19 across the world. So if you wanna get yourself one, that link is also going to be in the description. If you know an entrepreneur, if you are an entrepreneur or if you just wanna support entrepreneurs across the globe, then you definitely need to be wearing one of these. Okay, on that note, our topic for today is entrepreneurs health. So you guys have been asking tons of questions around entrepreneurs and their health. How do you take care of yourself? Is it even important? Um, so let's jump straight into that. Peter, are you going to ask the questions then the tribe members can put up their hearts if they're ready okay. to answer? Okay, okay. So um, question number one, how important is it to make time for things that aren't work and why? So that is from? That is from Edward. Amazing. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're going to pick three um let's start with marlin because marlin is one of the people that works the most in the world like i'm sure <laughs> like, marlin how important is it to do things that aren't work thanks nestine um yeah it's it's very important um it's it's so i think as an interesting thing i think most males are very very driven to like create a big career and 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 it's it's funny when you got like stability in your life um like family then it's very important um look we we all have different interests in life and um we we need to sort of having those other things that's outside of work just actually expands on our ability to be more creative um expands on our ability to actually take on more so, um, you know, finding that balance between doing the things that you love and then doing the things and doing your work, even though you love your work, is really important just to keep the energy and sustain you so that you can continue. That's Marlon August and I'm from Story Advantage. Awesome. Thank you so much, Marlon. And I mean, like, you, you do actually love it. Like, we've seen you on the coffee shop show. Most of the time you're bench pressing the camera or... You know, running around, running a marathon while you're giving your answers. So you're definitely living what you're saying, buddy. Awesome. Okay, next up, let's maybe hear from... You know what? I think let's hear from Matthew. Matthew. Matthew, I know you're in the fitness industry. So how important is it to make time for things that aren't work? I think it's very important. And... So I don't just want to say it's important because on some level, I think everybody knows that it's important to make time for something that is not work. But for one reason or another, we often find it difficult to do just because we think about all the things that we have to achieve. And then there are so many hours in the day. And so you just try to squeeze as much work in as you can. And I'm very guilty of this myself. I'm just trying to work, work, work. Every week now I'm thinking, how can I make this productive? How can I get more done? But, you know, life is not just about work and there are many things that make us who we are and I think that no matter how far you've come in your life work is not just the only thing that contributed to that there's also the relationships with other people there's also the activities you love to do and even the skills you've built over time they've not just come from work alone they've also come from your experiences so it would be counterproductive even though it doesn't seem like it's only focus on work because then you'll not be able to develop all these other aspects of yourself that will then lead to more productivity in the future if that makes sense. So I'm trying to come at it from the aspect of productivity because as small business owners, as entrepreneurs, we're all just trying to be productive to get as much, as much work done so that we can, you know, grow our business. But sometimes growing your business actually means backpedaling, taking a few, um, a few minutes, a few hours in the week off and just restoring your strength just so that you can be able to develop all these areas of yourself that then help you to be more productive. Thank you. 
I love it, Matthew. So in order to be more productive, we actually need to sometimes take time to be not productive at all. Uh, it seems counterintuitive, but um, I know that many people in the panel will agree mm. with you. So that was an awesome answer. Which, which reminds me that I'm going to be leaving this meeting halfway through to be counterproductive. <laughs> You want to tell? I know, Peter. No, Peter just no, tell no, them. No, just, no. just tell them. You know, you know what? It sounds, it sounds posh, but it's not. Um, I, my time off is when I'm in the garage and I'm tinkering and taking something that is broken and restoring it. That's my, that's my time. That's where I get to restore myself. So, I went and bought myself a mid-crisis car that I have to restore which I will be receiving later today. And I know it sounds posh because it's a Porsche, but it's not a real Porsche. Yeah, it sounds quite strange. Is it a fake Porsche? It's, it's a fake Porsche. Okay. It's a kid car. It's a kid car. Okay. So actually, well, why that is exciting and relevant to the show is because um, this Porsche actually comes with a motor. So Peter is going to be installing that in our VW bus. And then soon, hopefully, you'll see the coffee shop show from the road as we travel to connect entrepreneurs across the globe with each other. Um, so just like we've been doing virtually, we're going to physically be doing that as well. So that's going to be fun. Mm, looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Mm. But what I'm also looking forward to is um, an answer from Stephen Levy, because I know as part of his coaching, he actually spends a lot of time on energy management and teaching his clients how to properly manage their energy. So I'm super keen to hear, Stephen, like, is it important to spend time on not working and why? Yeah, very much so, uh, Nestine. So um, I just actually, uh, Megan and I just spoke about that exact same thing, that time out for any entrepreneur, solo entrepreneur, whether you've got people under you, um, is is it shouldn't be a need to have or nice to have it's a must have when you're doing your strategy put in build into the strategy the time to go and do your running or your exercise whatever that is for you or redoing your car or fixing up cars whatever that space is for you where you get re-energized is is an absolute must and I think someone in the group uh, just said now that I think it was Marlon that said his best time to think is when he runs. So why don't we do that? Why don't we enter into that space? I think it's a, it's a habit. It's a habit that we've been brought up with. Um, we feel guilty when we got to take time out away from work. And as I said to me, and I, I actually went through that where I, I didn't burn out well, nearly got close to burnout, not once, twice. So that was like pretty stupid. Um, and, but it was a tough lesson. And the psychologist also, she said to me, if you carry on, you're going to end up in hospital. And then how good are you going to be to your business? And it made me really think. And I think every entrepreneur needs to think of it. And uh, Matthew, I think hit it spot on, is if you don't do it, it can be detrimental. And he's 100% right. So whatever your place is to not think, go and do it. Put it in as part of your strategy. You have to look after yourself. Otherwise, you won't look after those you're leading or employing. Thank you, Stephen. Like and uh, we've been forgetting to drop our names at the end. Like, guys, <laughs> that was Stephen Levy from oh. Dare to Be Coaching and Beyond. The previous person was Matthew Ayola from Freelance Matthew, epic copywriter. And the first one was Marlon August from Story Advantage, a sales funnels expert. Okay, mm. so <laughs> <laughs> moving on. So it's important apparently to do things that like aren't work. I'm not too sure of this, who this next person is. Do you want to give a, a whack at that? Okay, so this one is from Laura. So I now want to basically know from you guys, what do you do when you are not working? Because it's easy to say, you know, like it's easy to say that this is important. Like it's important to do things that like aren't work, right? But are you guys maybe secretly like working 24-7 and just like telling us, the rest of us that we need to take time off? 
because I feel like you might be doing that. <laughs> okay, so the first person I want to hear from is um, Andras, who actually has his phone outside and just for this special episode, he's showing us the lake of Zurich and it just fits in so beautifully with the theme today. Um, do you want to show us the lake again, Andras? And then answer the question, like, what do you do when you're not working? So, great question, because what I, this is what I'm doing even during my, my break time. At least I try to work 30 minutes, 40 minutes walk every single day. And that's at least what I'm doing. And other times I'm mountain biking, road biking, hiking, doing yoga, meditation every single morning and so on. So it's all about every day. It's a little bit different. And sometimes, of course, I stay at home and work the whole day. That's all right. But my whole point is you need to go out in nature. You need to be able to relax and forget the work, forget everything about it and just enjoy your life. So I think it's one thing is moving your body, exercising enough. And that's great if you, if you have nature nearby, but you can also just walk anywhere. I love walking in my home city where I live now I'm at the moment, Horgen. And the other thing is be creative because we consume so much content. Usually we always try to learn. We talk with others and learn new things and watch these videos and learn about mindset and read books. But then the question is, what do you create? What do you create? So I always love to say, try out painting. Everybody knows how to paint. You just take out the canvas and have fun. You know, just enjoy or draw on a piece of paper. Nobody has to see. I'm, I'm doing it all the time. I have this crazy weird drawings and I never show it. Some, some I show, the better ones I can show. But the rest, I just enjoy drawing. And I also enjoy writing poems. I have some novels written, books, and so on. So do whatever you love to do. Just figure out the best thing for yourself, whatever it is. And then do it, as, as Steven mentioned, do it consistently. So it's part of my life now. I cannot, I cannot not do this. I, I meditate every single day. I sit down and now I'm also doing yoga at least every morning a little bit. So it's part of my daily routine. And I think that's, even if it's just 10 minutes every day, it's better than zero minutes every day. And yeah, just enjoy, just enjoy, go out and find, find what suits your lifestyle and find the time to do it. And sometimes you can make it easier to build these habits. If you want to run, put out your running shoes every single day so you see it. And then go 10 minutes run every day. Or if you want to meditate, put out the meditation pillow in the middle of the room so you create the environment. And you can also create this calendar for yourself where you check, okay, today I did it, tomorrow, the next day, next day. So you just, just check and see your progress. And if it's not 100%, that's perfectly fine. You build it up, build it up, build it up. And after one or two months, you will have a routine and a habit built up. And that's amazing. So I'm Andras Kaprosh, your business and mindset coach. And I wish you all the best. <laughs> Thank you, Andras, and thank you for the beautiful view of the lake. How fortunate are we to be able to see that? It's just absolutely gorgeous, um, absolutely stunning. And yeah. you guys, you gave me a lot of ideas of what I could do that's not work. So I am convinced that you're not secretly working 24-7 hours a day. However, the other people on this call aren't off the hook yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, guys... Um, let's maybe hear from Janine. What do you do when you are not working? Hi, Nestine and Peter and listeners. It is such an interesting topic because it can go on for days and days and days. But for me, it comes back to my health. As an entrepreneur, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything else. So focusing on your health, I'm, I'm taking my health and making it a client. Because I'm doing that, I don't want to lose a client. So I want to do, and I am doing everything in my power to make sure that my health is top notch. Whether it's walking for 10 minutes, whether it is touching a dog outside in nature. You know, dog is a great therapist, I'm just saying. But do something small that really resonates once again with your values and what, that builds that fire. 
remember, you've got the fire within you. Work with it. I'm Janine from Jelani Sales, your virtual sales office. That is amazing. Thank you, Janine. So I also saw on the group, like, and this is maybe some inside info that I'm going to use against you, but you also said something about art therapy. You do that in between working, like as a break? Yes, art therapy is really something, um, I did it as a friendship thing with my friend, we do it once a month, and then it became something that I do um, daily. So it is quite interesting, There's, there are days that I just scribble and I'm not even in the lines of what I'm supposed to do, but that means I've got so much busyness in my head, and that's what I have to work through. And then the next day I do art therapy, painting something else, I'm in lines, which means I'm in my mind, I'm in a good space. So yes, I would definitely recommend art therapy as well. Awesome. So we have some themes emerging, like lots of people saying like you get, need to get active, lots of people mm -hmm. saying um, you need to focus on your creativity. I'm super keen to hear from the lifestyle expert herself, um, our owner of the Entrepreneur's Lifestyle magazine, Leonie, you're prob probably like one of the gurus on this topic. So mm -hmm. what do you do when you're not working? Oh, thank you, Nastine. Yeah, uh, that's something very, very important for me, uh, especially in the Entrepreneur's Lifestyle magazine that I implemented. I used to be someone that didn't really go out, and now I have to go out at least once a week. Uh, I go to the beach a lot, and I love it. It's just like listening to the ocean just does that something, that healing and just that calming down time. Yeah. I love that, Leonie. I actually channeled my inner Leonie the other day. Okay. I wasn't feeling like it, hey, but I was like, I just need to do something else for a bit. So I actually walked to the beach. I mean, I was planning on walking back, but then, then I, I opted out, out and I phoned mm -hmm. Peter and I was like, come right <laughs> to me. I made it here, but come take me back. But um, oh, that's cool. that is awesome. I love it. Oh. And guys, if you want to see some of the things that Leone gets up to, it's quite interesting. Sometimes it includes things like kayaking and other fun things. It's all in the magazine. We'll link it for you in the description below. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I actually oh. really like that. Um, it, it brings back the question of, do you live to work or do you work to live? Um, it's a really big difference. And personally, I would yeah. like to work to live or live to work no. I, I like to live to work but it's changing <laughs> I'm getting there <laughs> okay um so Stephen Westwood like frantically uh, indicating at me that we need to check the com comments what what do we need to check the comments for no, that's not what it is. no ask that question in the comments oh, oh let us know oh. do you live to work or do you work to live Oh, that is amazing. Okay, just ask them to do it. <laughs> no, open up your mouth and ask them. Uh, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Patience. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, let us know in the comments. Do you live to work or do you work to live? Let us know. And, um, yeah, I think it's quite interesting. Awesome. I can't mm. wait to see everyone's answers. Okay, now, let's see. Okay, so you guys are all advocates for, you know, work working to live um how many hours a week do you spend on not working and that's from thomas okay let's hear from stephen westwood how many hours a week do you actually spend on not working uh Hi, everybody, again. Um, I think that's a quite an interesting one because it would also depend, in my case, what you would consider work. Like there are certain group events that I go to that I don't consider work, but some people might. Um, but ultimately, if we're looking at a breakdown of my day, I try to work about five to six hours maximum per day, five days a week. I have an entire weekends off. Um, but then, of course, you've got the question of sleep. So I don't need a full eight hours sleep. This morning, I well, today I slept, I think, three or four hours. But what I do in between that and my working day is I will read or I'll do an activity or 
I'll watch YouTube videos. Um, you know, just something that is a bit educational or mind-numbing. One of the two. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that, that's basically... I don't spend all of my working day working either. I make sure that I have breaks in there. I make sure that I have food. Food's very important for me. Um, I'm actually hungry as we speak. Uh, <laughs> but... Yeah, so that, that's basically my working day. Quick breakdown. So Stephen Westwood, SPW Copywriting. Thank you, Stephen. I don't know how you guys do it. I... Actually, we forgot to, to mention one thing. And uh, Mr. Westwood will know exactly what we're talking about when we mention the word nap. I schedule that into my day too. How many hours a day do you nap, Stephen? Okay, so this varies. I actually have like a scale of how many naps I need or how long of a nap I need. So sometimes it can be a 10 or 20 minute nap. Other times you're talking three, four hours. Um, it also depends on how big of a lunch I have before I have my nap. Uh, obviously, the bigger the lunch, the longer the nap. So <laughs> that is a nap, Marlon, that is a nap. It's in the middle of the <laughs> afternoon. That is the <laughs> I, I actually think it's actually incredible um, because you've allocated yourself time to actually just put your mind at ease and rest your mind. Um, you know, a lot of people overwork themselves to the point where they just can't think straight. And the reality is, is that a nap is actually empowering. It really is. And if you're stuck on a problem, instead of sitting there trying to solve it, take a nap. When I overload myself with work, which happens regularly, I take a nap. It helps me prioritize what needs to be done. Um, yeah. So again, Stephen Westwood, SBW Copywriting, take a nap. <laughs> I uh, love it. I'm going to take that advice all day long. Okay, amazing. Let's hear from someone else. Um, Megan, I'm super keen to hear from you because I know Stephen Levy has been working with you on this specifically. How many hours a week do you actually spend not working as a real actual entrepreneur, you know, part in the hustle? Like how many hours a week do you spend not working? Hi, Nestine. I'm assuming it's me you're speaking to. We've got two oh, minutes yes. here today. Yes. <laughs> Megan Bears, please. Bambi. <laughs> there we go. No, it's me. Nistin, I, I agree 100% with Stephen there. I also schedule naps into my day, and I also make sure that I schedule my, um, my other me time. So anything, if it's not a day for me to go and nap, if I'm not feeling up to a nap, I make sure that I've got the time scheduled aside for myself. And what I've done um, by getting into the entrepreneurial space, I've basically trying to diverge as far as possible as I can to what was happening when I was in corporate. So there's a couple of reasons I've opted to leave co the corporate space. One of them being the 14, 16 hour days. Um, the fact that it was a strict seven to four or nine to five, whatever the case might be. And the reason I got into freelancing and into the space I'm in at the moment is so that I can live better, my lifestyle can improve, and basically I can be in a happier space with uh, what I do every day. So for me, it's a matter of scheduling around the projects that I have for a certain space of time. So if I'm working on four projects in one week, I will set out time for those four projects accordingly. So one day I will maybe work six hours, the next day four hours, depending on exactly what is required from the project. So it changes all the time. But the important thing for me is not to make this a strict seven to four, nine to five job, and also to allow myself that flexibility to, to work with whatever I need to do and like to do otherwise. So. For me, it, it varies, and I'm using that as my compass every day. Thank you. Uh, Megan from Megan Creative Content and Copywriting. Um, oh, Megan, actually, um, if you compare corporate um, to where we are in our lives right now, 
there are actually some um, corporate companies that have taken this concept um, of having a relaxed mind and actually really implemented it. Um, I was looking at um, the head offices for Google and their entire thing is that their staff have access to the swimming pool, they have access to, and this is all at work, they have access to relaxing spaces, they have access to um, you know, all these things that they can actually do at work. They understand that they have to fulfill certain tasks to, um, to be effective, but the environment that's been, that has been created gives them access to actually be very relaxed. Um, for me, that was like, this is a company that actually is so focused on their staff and they understand that um, to create that environment is actually more productive. Right. It's more, their staff are more product, productive. Look at who they are and look at what they've become. Um, so absolutely incredible. Absolutely. Um, Peter, I just wanted to add to that, that um, I mean, there's a space that Stephen and I could, could probably go and work at. There's a few of them now that offer nap pods as, I mean, that is, it's brilliant at work, I think, because I'm in exactly the same space where once I've had a snooze, I feel like I can be productive and I'm focused and that little niggle that's been bothering you all morning, it un unravels itself. Mm -hmm. Just give yourself, your brain, that space to, to rest and to sort of brew on it and it, unravel, it unravels itself. But... Um, what I think in that respect with um, the corporates going that route, Peter, is it's important to remember that um, we are the most important resource when it comes to, to the working world. And whether you're a freelancer or working in corporate or any other space, the fact of the matter is one person, one brain, one employee can only do so much and take so much in the space of a certain set of hours. And I think the, the secret is to work with each individual on that basis. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll probably get the best out of each and every one of them, just adopting that approach. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just quickly jump in here? So yeah. there are two studies that one of them focused on a six hour work day, five days a week, and that happened in Sweden. And the other one uh, is a study that happened in Iceland and they focused on the four day work week. In both cases, they found that because people had reduced the number of hours they were working and they actually extended the downtime that somebody had, uh, what happened was there was a huge boost in productivity, there was a huge boost in happiness and there was a huge morale boost as well as um, other benefits to having either a six hour day or a five day work week. Now. I don't know about anybody else here, but I know that when I work a long day, and I mean, I start at like six in the morning and work until seven, eight, nine at night, I don't feel like I get a lot done. Um, and I feel like it's a slog and I'm dragging myself through. Whereas when I have a short day, I get quite a lot done. If I were to do a to-do list, I'd tick quite a lot off. Super interesting. Thanks for asking and then just jumping anyway, Stephen. <laughs> yes, you may jump in. <laughs> of course you may. That was valuable. Um, oh yeah, it's very interesting. It's also making me think, but you guys have been making me think ever since Tribe Tea Time because I don't like to take time off and Peter's going to go uh, fetch his I'm going to go be unproductive. The Excuse fake push. Enjoy it. <laughs> um... I don't take that much time off. Like, I feel guilty if I'm not working. Like, even if I could maybe perhaps afford to, like, not work, I'm always like, but if I work now, I'll have more money later. And I want a lot of money. So I can help a lot of people. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think I, I'm on the opposite spectrum. I work quite a lot. What I have heard, though, is, um, and I think this is where Marlon asked a very cool question. So some of you are are doing like the whole not working thing as entrepreneurs and it's working well for you but some of you are giving up your sleep in order then to be able to work enough and not work enough so i'm keen to hear um 
how much do you guys actually sleep? And why? Is sleep a priority for you? Or is that something that you're willing to give up to work and not work? Okay, let's hear from Matthew. Matthew, I'm going to guess that you don't sleep at all because you knock out about 60 articles a day. Oh, my God. So it's very funny because sleeping is one of my favorite things to do in the world. And I wish I could sleep more. But like you said, so there's this very small part of me that feels guilty when I sleep too much. So I'm, I'm always stuck between I'm trying to get enough sleep so that I'm actually happy with myself, but then not sleeping so much that I feel guilty. So I will usually go to bed around uh, between 10 and 11 p.m. and I'm up by 6 a.m. So that's about seven hours on average and I'll take an hour's nap within the day. So I try to take the hour's nap somewhere around 12, 1, just because immediately I wake up, I'm very productive. And I can write um, maybe articles that require a lot of concentration, or I can do tasks that I usually don't like to do. So I'm most productive when I just wake up. So I try to cram as many tasks that I can into that window. So yeah, Matthew, I'm a freelance copywriter, freelancematthew.com. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, so that's about seven hours and a one hour nap. Let's hear from uh, Marlon. I'm keen to hear your answer. Are you someone that is happy to give up sleep and why? Uh, I used to be. And like I used to be that, you know, 25 hour guy, you know, like, you know, you know, the bar oh, one ad. Um, but then I quickly realized, I quickly realized that that's like Stephen was talking about. You, you actually need the sleep. Um, the more time you have, off it actually rejuvenates you um i'm also the problem is i'm from a large sport sporting background so what we would do is i would sleep maybe four hours at night six four to five hours at night and then do like two hours in the afternoon because you actually kaput so when going back to work time you know i was like doing crazy, crazy hours, like 14, 15 hours of work a day. And that's quickly started to burn me out. So now I'm like very clear. Um, I, I work about 12 hours a day, 12, 13 hours. And my sleep time sits in six hours. And, but, but it never, but when I, when I was burnt out, I literally started to test it. So um, I got a watch and I monitor that thing. So I was doing like eight hours for a month for about two, two to three months and then slowly started reducing at seven. Now it's down to six, sometimes five and a half or four, depending on how much work there is. But now it's like my, my average is six hours a day and I'm really good. And then I also make sure, well, this is the other thing, food, Stephen was talking about food earlier. Food actually drains energy um, before it actually replenishes. So from my perspective, what I do is I don't eat between the day. And then that keeps me going perfectly. Um, and, and I actually rather, I eat once a day, sometimes twice. So I do an OMAD, um, it's called the OMAD, one meal a day. And, um, and, and that's great as well because it's, it's um, what's the other word? It's, you know, that long intermittent fast for that period of time is really great. And it gives me a lot of energy when I get into the gym later in the evenings. So, that is like, I mean, I've obviously tinkered and played with this for a long time and stretched my non-eating times for longer periods. Of, and that just builds up the energy, lots of focus, can go throughout the day. But when, I'm, when I stop work, I stop. And the weekends, I don't work. So that is how I did it. And my name is Marlon August, marketing consultant at Story Advantage. Thank you, Marlon. Finally, something comes out that I could actually, I can do with, I can, I can scale my work down to, I think, 13 hours a day. I don't know how I'm going to do the six hour sleep thing, though. I love sleep. I'd rather go with like not doing things that's not work. Like if I can work and sleep, I'm kind of fine. But it's so interesting to hear from all of you. I'm interested to hear from one of our financial people because Sharon, it takes a lot to keep your brain going and doing all of those number crunching exercises that you do the whole day. So 
on your side, how much do you actually sleep? Is sleep something that you're willing to give up for, for work or not working or how much of a priority is it? Um, I have a great sleep routine. It's from 10 to five and that's it. And I sleep well every night. For me, my number crunching is done in the mornings so that I'm uh, fresh, my brain is fresh. I'm not very good at sitting till late in the evening, um, uh, doing all kinds of crazy plans and putting them together. I, I did all my studying in the morning. I do my, um, and I do my plans in the morning. Obviously it's subject to who I'm meeting and who I'm chatting to. And things are a bit different now, obviously during COVID. Uh, you, I had quite a good routine at the office when there was office space and it is different now. Um, but yeah, when I say I'm a sleeper, you know, I get my solid from 10 o'clock at night to five o'clock in the morning and, um, and that works for me. And yeah, no, I won't be doing financial plans after 10 o'clock. It just, it, it, it wouldn't work. Who knows what figures I would come up with. Got, <laughs> got, to, do it, got to do it on a clear head. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny uh, thank you Sharon that is awesome I think you and Miss Stephen Levy are probably on the more sleep side which also makes me feel more normal because I sleep a lot guys like <laughs> I love it, sleeping it's from 10 o'clock till 5 o'clock a lot I don't know I think that's pretty I think that's pretty normal I think that's pretty normal I sleep Usually, like if I can help it, like I sleep from nine until just before eight. Like, if I can, like I love sleeping. That's why I'm okay with not doing anything else in work because I know like I sleep a lot. But um, you know, it's super, super interesting. Okay, so my next thing now is um, still with the entrepreneur's health theme. This is from Mariah. She wants to know, uh, what is your guys' relationship with food as an entrepreneur? So do you stress eat, overeat, undereat, never eat? Okay, we know Marla never eats. <laughs> well, eats once a day. But how do you use food to still maintain your productivity? Or do you, do you use it maybe as a crutch? Like, do you stress eat a lot? So um, let's hear from Andras. Hello, hello. So this is such a great and important question because I think if you visit a doctor, the first question the doctor should ask, what do you eat and how do you eat? And I am now, one and a half years ago, I started to eat a plant-based diet. So I'm trying to put in my body the most healthy food. So I'm usually trying to start with a green smoothie in the morning, then some porridge, oats for sure. And I'm basically eating a very healthy and balanced diet that includes the vitamins and minerals. And of course, you need to get those nutrients in your body. So if you just eat empty calories, that doesn't really help you. So I think it's very, very important that you pay attention and figure out what's the best healthy diet for you. And your choices matter every little choice. And now we can say, okay, I'm eating a plant-based or vegan diet but that can be completely unhealthy as well. That's not the whole point. The whole point that you need to eat those vegetables, fruits and so on in a very, very wide variety. And I'm trying to eat at least personally as little processed food as possible. And it changes how many times I eat during the day. Sometimes it's like two or three times. Sometimes it's five times. I did intermittent fasting two years ago, but then I started to lose weight and so on. So I, I can recommend two things to try out. There is an application called Daily Dozen. And if you download, it's a very simple. It will show you what to eat, what to consume in one single day. So you get all the healthy vitamins, nutrition, and so on. And the other thing is what I'm using is chronometer. Sometimes if I do, if I feel even now I'm using it, to put in every single food that I am eating. And then I can see, okay, this much calorie I'm taking in, this is the protein, these are the fats and the carbs. And that has to be in obviously balanced as well. And once you do it, you don't have to do it all the time, but if you do it for a week and two weeks, 
you will exactly see how much you take in. Do you have the balance of the recommended amounts you can uh, ask your doctor or do your research? And one more last thing I highly recommend to do for everybody, supplements. Don't forget the supplements, but take the supplements based on blood tests. Not like, oh, I feel like I did that in the past, 10 years ago. I, I, I was taking uh, magnesium and my, my nutritionist asked, okay, why do you take that? Did you make uh, any kind of blood test? And I said, no. So make that blood test, make sure three important values, make sure you have vitamin D, vitamin B12 and enough iron. If you don't have those, you will feel tired all the time. So make sure you have the test, make sure you are eating a healthy, balanced diet. And it's a huge, huge, huge topic with a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of videos which are not showing facts. So that's why I'm trying to follow Dr. Gregor because all of the facts he is mentioning based on real studies and peer review studies. So it's a big, big topic. Anyways, I'm Andras Kaprush, your business and mindset coach. And <laughs> Great health for everybody. Thank you, Andras. That was awesome. Wow. Okay, so we have a super healthy entrepreneur in the house. I feel guilty just by listening to you. Um, let's maybe hear from someone. Like, I personally, I know I should be doing those things, but I don't always. I know I should. My only thing that I stick to always is if I'm going to be having to do a lot of work or if I have to focus, like I eat protein and I don't eat any carbs. But that's basically the only thing I'm following at the moment. In between, I eat whatever. So, Andres, we can all learn a lot from you. Oh, and I do sometimes stress eat. Like at some time, sometime a while ago, that was a big thing for me. Like I would, I would like devour like a whole plate of like chocolate something <laughs> before a big project. I don't know. Is that anything that you guys can relate to out there? Like entrepreneurs that are listening to us? Don't you want to tell us in the comments? Have you ever stress eaten because of entrepreneurship? What's your relationship with food like? How do you use it? Are you like Andras that's like a super health nut? Or like more like me that just stress eats? <laughs> and then let's hear from um, Stephen Westwood. I think that's going to be interesting because I think you're basically going to tell us the opposite of Andras. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so first of all, my meals are healthy. They are packed full of nutrition. I actually have two vegetarian or vegan meals a week. Um, I have fish once a week. And then protein wise, I'll have red meat once a week and then the rest of the time is like chicken. Um, well, no, it isn't like chicken, it is chicken. Um, <laughs> my issue is I love food so much that I would literally eat constantly. Um, so snacks are my big downfall. And as I've said in, the, in, in our comments that I, the further along the day goes, the sweeter my tooth gets. So in the mornings, I would think nothing of having um, some peanuts or, you know, some dried fruit. But then as the day goes on, it becomes, you know, a chocolate bar. If I'm up late at like one o'clock in the morning, it's baking a brownie, um, then consuming said brownie. Um, and then that, that is my weakness is snacking. Meal-wise, my meals are healthy, um, but I get my double chins from consuming too many products, shall we say. <laughs> so that's me. Stephen Wastewood from HPW Copywriting. I'm also, I'm such a snacker, but I'm also, you know what? When I work late, it's easier to eat healthy. Like, let's just be honest about that. Also, when I sleep more, it's easier to not eat like sugar for me. I don't know. Let's hear from Stephen Levy. Your relationship with food. Do you stress eat, under eat, over eat, never eat like Marlon? <laughs> what do you do? I have such a great relationship with food. It's incredible. I love it. Our relationship is built on coffee first and food straight after that. Um... No, but we eat, no, I eat, I don't, I, I, we eat, I eat quite healthily, so, um, but I mix it because 
I love varieties. <laughs> I'll eat I eat healthily. Uh, we don't. I don't eat a lot of bread. I don't drink a lot of uh, fizzy cool drinks unless I have a brandy because you can't drink it without a fizzy cool drink. And it, I think, uh, but I, I can get into what you were saying, Stephen. I can get into that duck uh, eating where I uh, stressy where I can. I've got work to do. Two slabs of chocolate, easy, easy. But I try and balance that with, I think Andreas said, uh, Andrea said uh, put your tackies out in the morning, you know, your running shoes out in the morning. So I do that. So I do run in the morning, but it doesn't help. I can stand up and show you what my relationship with food is. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, we need energy. I think uh, we just got to look, look after ourselves and make sure that... Um, that what we're eating is keeping keeping us energized because food can also be have a, a detrimental effect to you. So it's how we want to show up. And as entrepreneurs, I think it's important to what it's like rest and eating properly and looking after yourself and taking care of yourself, but have a life of harmony. Don't forget the fun stuff. Thank you, Stephen Levy from Dare to Be Coaching and Beyond. Um, that is an awesome, and at least like I now I know there's someone else that also stress eats on the tribe and makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> but yeah, we should try to not do that. Make time for not working, which is the next question on the list. And um, this one is from um, Layla. Layla wants to know, um, where do you find time? to do things that aren't work-related? Do you schedule time? Do you kind of go with the flow? What is it? How do you find the time to actually not work? And then Leila, my answer is I don't. Okay, next person. <laughs> Megan, let's hear from you. Thanks, Nestine. Uh, love that question. Yes. Um, Leading off from my previous answer where I said I'm trying to take the, the corporate world and the entrepreneurial world in complete different opposite divulgent spaces. And that's what I opted to do from the get-go. So for me, it's a matter of scheduling it in. I make um, the time to take my afternoon at the beach or do my walk on the beach in the morning, whatever the case might be. And it's not a matter of doing it every day. It's a matter of doing it when I feel I need it. So I would absolutely um, decide this morning that I've been working for three hard days and tomorrow morning I'm waking my daughter up early and we're going for a walk on the beach as a start our day. So I should you look in because um, it's not only a matter of taking the break, it's a matter of um, recalibrating yourself on, on various levels. So for me, that's important. And I make, I make sure that I schedule those times. Thanks, Megan, at Megan Creative. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. OK, so we have at least one person in favor of scheduling. Let's hear from Marlon. Marlon, what do you do? Do you schedule time in? Where do you find the time? Yeah, um, I'd agree. You have to block out the time for you. If you don't make that time for yourself, who else is going to? Um, I was always, I've always been amazed by certain people that I'm sure you all know that I've found in my life that just can do all these things. They like do everything. And you're like, where do you, where do you find the time? And one thing I realized is that, that those people, they are so focused in what they have to do that they can just pile on a few more things that they can get it done faster. Um, they're not sitting wondering about other things too much. So um, definitely time blocking is a great idea. And I mean, humans are creatures of habit. We do things over and over again. So build it in. You don't have to like stress yourself to like completely change. Just like slowly start doing things. Oh, I need more time for myself. Okay, so I'm going to meditate for two minutes because you have two minutes. There's definitely two minutes, you know? <laughs> so I'm gonna go for a walk up the road, you know? That, that just disconnects you from where you are. Um, 
maybe you're gonna like uh, Matthew said earlier, he likes to do puzzles. I love puzzles too. And you know, you just do that for like five minutes. Um, you know, whatever it takes to just divert your attention from whatever it is and slowly you build it up. I want more time to do this. I want more time to do that. And, and you'll start to develop this um, thing that works for you. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of John Martini, And he says that we will always do what we value. So in essence, we're already doing it. We're already positioning the things that are most important to us anyways. So it's just more about being focused in that time and giving and being like, okay, I'm honoring that time that I'm already giving. And, you know, now it's time for this. So that's the way I think about it. And my name is Marlon August and I'm part of, um, I'm a marketing consultant at Story Advantage. Amazing. Thank you, Marlon. And thank you for those encouraging work. So even someone like me that's not doing much at the moment can start small and start introducing those things and find something that works for you. And it's all about balance. I love it. Okay, Stephen Levy basically said he's going to murder me if I don't ask Stephen Westwood to comment on this question. So let's go with Stephen Westwood. Please give us your best answer. So how on earth are we supposed to find the time for not working? Thank you, uh, Stephen, for nominating me to answer this question. Um, so there are several ways that you can do this. The way that I do it is, first of all, I do block timing. So I block certain hours in the day in order to do certain activities. For example, I know that I'm going to have a two-hour nap today. Um, or I know that this morning I want to work on my social media. You know, I block that time in. What I then do is, well, and this is what I advise Leone to do, is actually block in what it is that you want to do outside of your business first and then work around that. Um, a conversation that we had on Wednesday at Tribe Tea Time was to schedule your exercise and separate it from your personal time, the activities you want to do. Now, the other thing that I do do that I haven't mentioned so far is, um, as you all know, I like to plan ahead and I like to be ahead on my work. So that does two things. First of all, it frees up time for when I have a one-off client or I have a new client coming in for the onboarding process. The second thing it does is it gives me the freedom to be a bit more spontaneous. Um, so again, it sounds weird, but you do have to plan spontaneity into our daily lives. Um, and so when I do want to go out for... I don't know, indoor skiing or ice skating, which is two of the activities I am doing this weekend. Um, I can do it on the fly. Um, so, yeah, that, that's what I would suggest, especially if you are currently in a position where you seem to just be constantly working. Start blocking actual time for you to do different activities, and they could be work-related and definitely not work-related. Um, so I'm Stephen Westwood, SPW Copywriting. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. We all aspire to be as organized as you. <laughs> that was awesome, guys. This was a freaking fantastic coffee shop conversation show. Our comments have been going wild inside the Zoom group. Um, I hope it's doing the same on social media. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Please remember to let us know, do you work to live or do you live to work? And what's your relationship with food looking like? Are you willing to give up your sleep? We want to know everything. Um, on that note, this um, whole episode was basically um, inspired by our copy and content writer from Nigeria, Matthew Iola, uh, from Freelance Matthew. Matthew, thank you so much for prompting me to do this topic. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. And guys, if you want to get in touch with Matthew, he is your copy and content writer in the health and fitness industry. So if you're a virtual coach or a like fitness coach or any type of thing in the health industry, you need to talk to Matthew. He produces amazing, amazing content. The other thing we got going on in the tribe at the moment is we want virtual assistants. So if you're still listening to us here right now, send us virtual assistants. We have a whole exciting virtual assistant network getting set up and getting out there and getting going. And it's 
it's going to be absolutely amazing. It's, it's called Explore Van. And Janine Lingenfelder is heading that up. I'm putting her links for you in the description as well. Please do contact her if you're a virtual assistant and you're out there. Um, remember to get your jewelry. Links are there. Support our Somerville. She makes these. And these are the symbol for entrepreneurs rising out of the ashes of COVID-19 from across the world. So get it. You need it. Um, guys, this has been the Coffee Shop Conversation show. Absolutely jam-packed. It's been amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I am Nestine and this is Peter, and we are the co-founders of Explore Protect Entrepreneurial Haven. We will see you again next time, same time, same place. Love you guys a lot, and may all your wildest entrepreneurial dreams come true.